Okay, this video is about two further maths mechanics questions. Um, the descriptions are down below, the full, you know, the full questions are right down below, and I'm gonna talk through how you do them. And I'm gonna try to explain my thought processes along the way and, and what I look for and stuff and things. Okay, so the first question is just a random number 15 in the list of questions, goes like this. You've got a particle of mass M, always in kilograms unless they say otherwise, um, that's moving in vertical circles um, on the end of a light and extensible string of length r, it should say meters, so length r meters, okay? And given that the speed at the bottom, the velocity at the, the lowest point is twice the velocity at the highest point. Maybe it's going clockwise, I don't know. Um, you you want to know the velocity at the bottom and you want to know the tension at the top, the tension in the string at the top of the particles circle. Okay, so here are some things that I do to sort myself out. All right, it's very, very common that we're going to need a force force equation, or equations, sometimes you have to do forces, forces this way and forces in a perpendicular direction. Um, sometimes it's vertical and horizontal, sometimes it's, you know, sometimes it's vertical, horizontal, sometimes it's along the inclined plane and perpendicular to the inclined plane. In the terms of a circle, it's going to be radial versus tangential forces. Radial forces acting in the direction of the radius, you know, along the uh, radial line or acting perpendicular, which is would be the tangent line. You wanna take your forces about a particular point, okay? So we're gonna have force equations to play with and we're going to have, usually when you do circular motion, you end up having to look at energy equations and maybe just, just one energy equations one energy equations. This is not an English lesson, thank God. Okay. Um, and when you have circular motion, there's a few things to be aware of. Okay. When you have, because uh, like you have a fixed center point, and then you have this string, and you have this mass that you're 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 whipping around. Um, I guess we're going clockwise, but you're, you know, whoosh, 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 you know, like a rock. Everybody wants a rock to wind a piece of string around, and you're just, just, just whipping this rock around in a vertical circle, trying not to smack yourself in the face. And here's how the forces go. Okay, so it's as far as the so focus on the particle, particle man, particle man. Okay, so. What is he experiencing for forces? Okay, well, he's got gravity tugging down on him. That's his weight, okay, because vertical circle. Tension acts inwards toward the circle, okay? That's something you want to take, take note of, that as far as the particle is concerned, tension points toward center because if it didn't i mean that that's what's keeping the particle from flying off in a tangential direction you know whip 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 this the string breaks the rock goes whoosh, off in its path the reason it bends into a circle is because the string is tugging on the damn thing All right okay so that that's important to know the the other thing that's important to know is that because of circular motion, you get a force, your, your, your net force, RC, your net force for circular motion is mv squared over r. That's your mass times acceleration formula. That's how you say tangential acceleration for circular motion. There's there's a whole conversation behind that that we're not going to get into in this video. 
Okay, so that's going to be your net force. So always set up your force equations as forces this way plus forces that way equals net force. This is your template for force equations, and that's going to save you. You pick one direction to be positive. You pick the perpendicular direction to be negative. You know, this way, that way. I mean perpendicular directions. Okay. No, I don't. <laughs> oh, my God, what am I talking about? Sorry. No, 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 no. No. Um, when you define your axes for, for directions, um, vertical, horizontal, or along along the inclined plane, perpendicular to the inclined plane, um, radially on your circle, tangentially on your circle, the, the two directions in two dimensions, or, or, or in three dimensions, you're going to have perpendicular axes um, to think how to set up your forces. Sorry, your force equation, forces this way plus forces that way, that's along a particular line. Okay, so one direction is going to be positive, the other direction is going to be negative. It doesn't matter which is which, just so long as you label your picture and you're consistent. Okay, so we can write some force equations for what the particle is doing at different points in its path. Okay, so when it's at the top of the circle. Okay. Here's your particle at the top of the circle. Maybe it's going clockwise. Okay. Um, here's your forces. Gravity is going downwards. Tension, they're all gonna coincide in the vertical, but it's hard to draw the picture that way. So I've kind of separated them out. Okay. You've got a particular Tension, maybe tension one, tension at the top. Okay. And then you're going to have a, a, a net force. So maybe I will say um, for positive and negative, I'll say this way is positive and this way is negative. It doesn't matter. Forces acting toward the center of the circle can be positive. That's that's kind of a nice way to do it. So your force equation here is, okay, so tension is acting toward the center, so that's positive. Gravity is acting in the same direction. I don't have to resolve that vector because it coincides with my radial direction. Okay, when I'm a wonky point over here, I have to resolve that vector, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, in question 16, we'll get to that idea. Okay, so I've got tension acting toward the center. I've got gravity, weight acting in the same direction. And then net force, that's mass times acceleration. And I'm just gonna emphasize that by saying mass times acceleration, that's your net force. But I know that in circular motion, it's gonna be mv squared over r and it's velocity at the top the highest point um, squared over <clears throat> the radius of r. And so if I wanted to write a force equation at the top, that's how I'd do it. And if I wanted to write the force equation at the bottom of the circle, draw another picture. Okay, here's your center. Here's your particle going clockwise, I guess. Um, tension, you're going to have a different tension. The string is going to experience a different oomph through it because now gravity, the weight of the particle is acting in the other direction. So there's already an oomph on the string. You know, you can, you, you can feel it. Like when you have a, a rock on a string, everybody wants a rock to wind a piece of string around you. And you're whipping this, this rock around in a circle. You can, you can feel it, you know, the, the pull on your hand. Um, and that's tension in the string. But if you're doing this vertically, the tension is going to be different um, at different points 
of the journey. Okay, so weight acts down, tension acts up. At, at the bottom of the circle, you know, gravity is acting in, in the radial direction again. Um, so I don't have to resolve this. This is velocity at the lowest point. That's sorry. That's that's not a um. That's not a force vector. That's 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 the shown velocity. That's that's kind of poor to have put that in the force force diagram. That's velocity. Okay. So the force is here. Okay. You've got a different tension. So toward the center is positive, but away from the center is negative. I know it's a subtraction, but I'm going to write it as adding a negative force because I'm showing the structure of my equations equals mass times acceleration. So T2 minus, excuse me, minus mg equals mass velocity at the bottom squared over the same radius. So if I needed force equations, there are my force equations. Okay. I can also write energy equations for top and bottom which I'm going to need to do. Um, okay. And I write the energy equations, this potential energy and kinetic energy. And it's gonna look like this. Okay, you have to decide where your zero height is going to be. Sometimes it's convenient to put it in the middle. Sometimes it's convenient to put it at the top or at the bottom. In this case, because we're talking about particle at the bottom and a particle at the top, um, I'm going to put, make the bottom to be zero height. And I mean, it, it doesn't ultimately matter, but it can save you some, some faff and headache if you choose wisely. So at the top, you know, the radius was R. Right, so that's going to be a height of two r meters up up at the top. So your potential energy at the top is going to be mass times gravitational acceleration times the height, and your kinetic energy at the top is going to be one half mass times velocity at the top squared, and at the bottom. I don't really know why I did that. That's what the top energy is. And at the bottom, your potential energy, well, m times g times the height of zero. You have no potential energy because we've taken that as the zero height. And your kinetic energy is going to be one half mass velocity at the bottom squared. Okay, And your energy equation is that energy is neither created nor destroyed. So energy at the top, um, mg times 2r plus one half m velocity at the top squared is going to be your potential energy at the bottom plus your kinetic energy at the bottom. Okay, so that's your, your energy equation. I hope you're with me so far. So we were told that um, the speed at the bottom is twice the speed at the top. So I'm looking at this, and I know I wrote the force equations, and that's all nice and good. I'll need those for the second part of the question. But I'm, I'm kind of realizing that maybe I can express um, velocity at the bottom in terms of mass and radius. And, and well, gravity is 9.8. So you, you, you kind of sandbox a little bit, then you start to smell how the pieces are going to be involved. So let's do a substitution. Um, I'm interested in solving. Okay, and this is this is kind of where you have to make a decision um, also, whether you want to say velocity at the bottom is twice that at the top, or half the velocity at the bottom is the velocity at the top. I mean, how, how do you, you know, how do you want to set it up? Um, the way I've done it, we end up with some fractions, but it's not really a big deal. Okay, so we're going to say two r m g plus one half. We want velocity at the bottom, don't we? Yeah. Okay, we want v l. 
Yeah, that's kind of a pain in the ass way I did it. I'm really sorry. That's okay. I mean, it's only a half. It's not going to be that, that bad. Okay, one half m velocity at the top. That's one half velocity at the bottom quantity squared. Just be careful with your halves. Equals one half m velocity at the bottom squared. I hope you're okay to this point. Okay, we're going to solve for VL. So I'm going to multiply that out, then start collecting up light terms and dividing by coefficients. Okay, so two. And actually, you know what? I see that mass is going to cancel out. That, that's quite nice. It's quite a happy thing. Oftentimes mass does. So two RG plus, let's see, a half squared is a quarter times another half of this. Another half is an eighth. So an eighth VL squared equals half VL squared. I'm going to subtract an eighth from both sides. 2RG equals a half minus an eighth. I think that's 3 eighths because that's 4 eighths minus an eighth. 3 eighths, okay. Equals 3. You also have a calculator if you can't be asked to do arithmetic in your head, which is perfectly reasonable. Multiply both sides by 8 thirds. So I've got 2 times 8 thirds, which is 16 thirds rg equals vl squared, which means that the square root of 16 thirds rg equals my speed at the bottom, that's in meters per second. This is the correct answer. If you want to simplify that, the 16 will throw a four out. So you could say four square root rg over three, if you wanted to do that, that's okay too. You might see that printed in a textbook because you know it's, it's common to simplify what you can but there's nothing wrong with that i don't think okay so that's and it's not a number it's the velocity at the bottom is going to depend on the radius of the circle it's not going to depend on the the mass of the rock that you're whipping around but it will depend on how long the string was if it's the case that the speed at the bottom is twice as fast, twice as fast as the speed at the top. Okay, so we got that relationship through the energy equation. Okay, yeah, it's not, it's not the nicest, but it's okay. It's okay. I, I've seen worse. Okay, the second part of the question wants to know the tension in the string. Um, the tension in the string when we're at the highest point. And now we will use our force equations. What? Tension at the highest point. So we're going to be playing with that. OK, OK, not so bad, not so bad. OK, so tension at the top. Tension in string at the top of the circle. OK, well, from before. It's, it's quite good. You can rewind the video. <laughs> Go copy it down if you didn't do it before. Okay. We have got tension at the top. Plus the weight equals m velocity at the top. Highest point. M p squared over r forces this way, plus forces that way, two forces in the same direction at the top, equals net force, mass times acceleration. That's your net force. Okay, and we want this tension. Okay, so what do I want to say? Piles of notes here on my desk. I want to say that the tension is going to be, well, do I want to sub in, I think I might want to sub that value in, but that's the velocity, the lowest point, you know that the velocity at the lowest point Gosh darn it. Velocity 
at the lowest point was twice as much as the velocity at the highest point. So one half lowest point velocity is going to be your highest point velocity. So because we're using highest point velocity here, I might just, because I, I got something tidy with only the radius in it, I might just swap that out and say that's going to be half times four root rg over three. I'm going to end up squaring it anyway, so it's not going to be quite so ugly. That's two ugly square root rg over three. You with me? My, my motivation to do that is just so I don't have to look at velocity. I can look at on things that are inherent to the to the story. The radius is inherent to the story. The mass is inherent to the story. Gravity is inherent to the story. And the velocities are variable everywhere. The tension is variable everywhere, but we're figuring out the value of one of the tensions. Okay, so you've got, I'm going to substitute that VH in. I'm not gonna do out all the arithmetic. I'm gonna use brackets. Okay, but I'm also gonna subtract MG from both sides. So I'm gonna take that as M over R times vh squared. So that's two ugly square root. And you should really pause to follow along with me to make sure that you're happy with what the heck I'm doing. Okay, I honestly thought I had this written down and now I can't find the paper that I was using. Ain't no big deal. Well, you think you write stuff down, you think you've got it all laid out and then I can't find any notes. Okay, well, that's okay, I can do math. T1 equals, okay, I'm over, don't, don't, do, don't do too much in your head, times four times RG over three minus MG and you, you tidy that up, your R's are gonna divide out, which is interesting that the tension isn't gonna depend on the radius. So this is, this is interesting stuff. Your tension will depend on the mass, but not on the radius. It's just, maybe that's why they wrote this question, because it's just kind of fun to think about all this stuff. What have I got? I've got four thirds mg minus mg, which shakes out as um, a third mg newtons, because tension is a force. And that's quite nice. So the tension at the top depends only on how heavy your rock is <laughs> and the speed at the bottom speed at the bottom depends only on the radius. Wild. Okay, well, anyway, that's that question, and I hope that's helpful. Um, the, the place where I personally went cross-eyed and got a little bit stuck was thinking about, um, I can't find my sheet now, um, how to set up my circular forces that you, there it is, Zeke is sitting on it. No, it's not. Zeke, where's my sheet that I was just literally writing and filming with? What was this, was it? Was it this? I started this video a few times and failed to throw my papers away. I guess it was this. Okay, so, um, I know that, but I had a brain freeze about where to put net force and what to do with the tension. So again, I reiterate, as far as the particle is concerned, tension is always working toward the center of the circle. No matter where you are, tension acting on the particle is directed toward the center of the circle. Don't worry so much about what direction your net force is pointing. Your math will take care of that. Think about what tension is doing in your, in your diagram and think about what gravity is doing in your diagram. And then, you know, forces this way plus forces that way equals net force and stick that at the end of your equation and then you can algebra as you need to. Okay, we're gonna see more of that in the next question. Okay, force, energy, off and away we go. All right, I think I've talked about to death. I'm going to put that on the floor. I'm going to start question 16. Okay, I take a little breather, say, all right. So question 16, 
is about a particle going around in a vertical circle, but this time on a light rod. Light mass doesn't matter. Okay, rods have mass, but in this story, it doesn't matter. Okay, so the rod is of length 1.5 meters. We've got a number for that. It's pivoted at one end O. Okay, so O for origin. So that's the, the, the center of my circle. And it has particle P. Okay, so you've got a rod. Uh, shall we go anti-clockwise this time? Why not? Whoosh, whoosh, this rod going around, okay? And some particle P, some mass. Let's <laughs> say particle. Um, I, I don't think five kilograms counts as a particle anymore, but that's how the wording of the question went. Okay, so P has mass five kilograms. That's quite heavy. That's um, that's over ten pounds. That's quite a chunk. You're whooping around on this. I'm just a little bit taller than one and a half meters. So this is quite a big story. Okay, um, particle P going around, light and extensible rod. Um, given that when, when the rod is vertical with P below O, so when that situation, the velocity of the particle is eight meters per second, okay. We're told that. So when P is right down at the bottom, going around anti-clockwise, and P is right down at the bottom, it's, well, sorry, I used that to show direction of motion, but that's my, my velocity vector. But your velocity vector is eight meters per second at that point. Okay, and the question is, where is P when tension in the rod is zero? Okay, and how fast are you going when you're at that point? I don't know how to reason that out with like English words and real life intuition. I'm, I'm pretty crappy for physics intuition. Um, it's kind of hard for me to think about, okay, so when, when it's whipping around, I know that the rod is pulling it toward the center so the your five pound mass doesn't go flying, five pound, five kilogram mass doesn't go flying off. Okay, I know that gravity is tugging on it. So sometimes gravity is, you know, when this this thing is right up at the top, gravity is really tugging into the, the rod. <laughs> so the rod is having a lot of, oh, this rock is really heavy going on. Um, and then down at the bottom, um, well, I mean, it's a compression force, but then down at the bottom, you know, gravity is pulling on the rod. So the rod is under tension at that point. And there's difference, there's um, physical characteristic differences with rods and strings. Like, you know, if if, uh, if this sucker slows down, the rod isn't going to collapse the way a string collapses. And so there's there's some differences in the story but largely you know you've got your force equations you've got your energy equations and that part is same of a sameness i'm babbling all right let's get on with the question how are we going to set up the picture for where p is because what i need is a diagram where p is somewhere on the circle and i know that the tension is zero and i know that i have gravity acting vertically downwards and i can set up some things so i don't actually well, personally, I don't know ahead of time where, you know, if it's, is it going to be in the Southern Hemisphere? Is it, is it going to be in the Northern Hemisphere? I, I don't really know. I, I could spend time tangling my brain in circles about it. But the math will help us out. Just be careful with your diagram, label things, and math usually sorts you out, which is really nice. So I just said, okay, let's just suppose that P is up here somewhere in the northern hemisphere. I didn't mean it to be, you know, like on a 45 degree angle. I just I just slapped it on the picture. Let's say it's there. Okay. Then I know some things about the story. I know that you know this distance is 1.5 meters. That's the radius of the rod. And I guess I guess the rod is quite quite sturdy. There's the rod. Okay. I know that um 
I need to describe the position of this thing. And I have, okay, so like, how do I say where on the circle that is? Okay, so you can describe location on a circle through angles. That's a nice way to do it. So the question is, where do you take the angle from? And I don't think it's immediately obvious, but they do talk about information at the bottom of the circle. So what I might do is describe this point through that angle. I'm going to call that angle theta. And that will tell me how how <laughs> how angular above the vertical my particle is. That was bad ground. Okay, that that's that to me feels like a clean choice because of the information we were given at the bottom of the circle. Okay. I am going to use some other angles when I start setting stuff up, but that's 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 where my position is going to be. Okay, well, what's happening with the forces at point P? Okay, I, I know that I'm going around anti-clockwise. If you don't like anti-clockwise, just like go stand behind the picture and then you'll be going clockwise. <laughs> Symmetry. Okay, so what's happening here? All right, I've got weight mass times gravity. I know M is five, but I'm going to use M for now. Okay. Mass times gravitational acceleration. I know that tension, where are my forces? Okay. That, that's, that's one force. I know that tension is acting inwards uh, with respect to my particle. And we said at this point, the tension is zero. Okay. How am I going to do my forces? Well, I want to think about Well, I'm going to do a force equation along the radius. When you have circular motion, it's really nice to do your forces radially and perpendicular direction is tangentially. It's really nice to define your axes like that. So let's look at forces radially. Okay, I'm going to have to resolve this vector into a radial component and a tangential component. Well, I guess I don't need the tangential component, but um, I'm going to have to resolve it. And it can be really helpful to tilt your picture <laughs> So that horizontal is actually physically horizontal. And then you can sometimes see a little bit more clearly what's a nice contrasting color to red, blue, I guess. Um, that's going to be mg trig something and mg something else trig. OK, so I. I, I don't know how to put theta directly into this picture. So I'm going to call, I'm going to use this angle here. I'm going to call it phi. It can help you visually if you put the crossbar of theta only to the edges, but the vertical bar of phi all the way through. Sometimes that helps distinguish your two Greek letters. Okay. And, you know, I've got parallel lines here. So those two angles add up to 180. That's one of those parallel lines there. So I'm just going to write that down in case I forget it, that theta plus phi is 180 degrees. You can do this in radians, but I'm going to do it in degrees. All right. So if I want forces radially, I mean, this is interesting because I can see that at this, the way I've drawn my picture, um, the component of gravity radially is acting toward the center of the circle here. OK, that's, that's interesting. Um, but I need to know the magnitude of that. So that's the adjacent side with respect to phi. So that's going to be mg cosine phi. If you're having trouble seeing that, then you need to draw this out for yourself. Label your angles. Tilt your page so the radius is horizontal. Here's your wonky diagonal. Here's your rectangle to resolve the vectors and think about adjacent and opposite. Okay, so forces one way plus forces the other way. Forces this way, 
This force is that way. Equals net force. Net force. Net force. Um, I'm going to take inwards toward the circle is positive and outwards a radius as negative. So forces pointing toward the center of the circle, you got a zero from the tension. I'm writing that in just to show that you know that I'm I'm taking it into account. And I've got the component of gravity acting in the same direction. I don't have any other forces going out that way. Okay, and my net force last time's acceleration, but we know that that's mass times velocity squared over the radius. The first question is where the hell is P? And I need to figure out phi and then I can figure out theta and I can tell you where the hell you are. And the next question is how fast are you going? So V is at this point. Okay, so I think I'm going to need another equation because simultaneous equations. Okay, but this is the way. I'm going to set up an energy equation because that is another thing that involves velocity. Okay, so I'm going to look at energy at the bottom because I have my velocity at, whoops, that's off camera. I'm going to look at energy at the bottom because I know how fast I'm going. And I'm going to look at energy up at this magic point where the tension is zero. And those two, two uh, bundles of energy are going to be equal to each other. And that's going to be nice to write down. I do have to think about where I want to take zero height. By the way, if you spotted that the M's cancel out here, good for you. <laughs> well then, and if you multiply up by R, I guess you've got R G cosine phi equals V squared. And maybe that's just a little tidier to say. You could have written it the other way and said, grr. You know what? Let's growl. Physics is hard. Grr, grr, cosine phi is V squared. Okay, no worries. Here's the energy equation. I guess this is page three of my notes. So where do we want to take zero height? And what's my motivation for what I choose? And here's my magic point P. That was down at the bottom. This is up where I am. Up where I'm at. Not an English lesson. Um. This is the choice I made. I took that as my zero height. And the reason I did that is because, remember how that's theta? Remember how that's phi? Well, through phi, looky, looky, right triangle, I can use this side of the triangle to talk about height for potential energy. And that's going to be less of a pain in the ass, pardon my French, than that triangle side plus a radius. That's why I chose zero here in the middle. You can set it up with zero being at the bottom or zero being at the top or anywhere else you feel like it, um, but it might make the arithmetic a bit more hairy. And, you know, sometimes you set something up one way and you get, you know, partway into your, your equations and you're like, oh, crap, this is really messy. Maybe I want to go back and put zero somewhere else. And that's a thing. And that happens. And you develop intuition through force of experience. The more problems you do, the more scenarios you set up, the more of a feel you develop for what you want to do with the damn thing. But sometimes you start it and then you're like, oh, crumbs, and you crumple it up and you throw it on the floor and you start again. <laughs> okay. And that's that happens to all of us. So I'm going to take 
middle as zero height, and I'm going to take up as positive and down as negative. So down here, my height is going to be uh, minus 1.5 meters. And up here, where the tension, the tension is zero magical spot on my circle, this height is the length on that triangle. That's a straight up R cosine phi. <laughs> Not mg cosine phi, R cosine phi, different, different triangle. And I know that R is 1.5. So that, that's my height. Okay, so my potential energy, so at the point where tension is zero, okay, my potential energy, mgh, mg, h, which is mg 1.5 cosine phi. I know that the mass is five, isn't it? Um, sometimes masses cancel out, they might not. I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. Okay, and my kinetic energy is one half mass velocity squared. I already said V was how fast we're going at our point. I guess it was on the previous slide. The letter V is going to stand for how fast I'm going at this magic point. Okay, so there's my kinetic energy there. Okay, and I know that at the bottom, okay, at the bottom of the circle, my potential energy is going to be mgh, which is mass gravitational acceleration, and my height is minus 1.5. And my kinetic energy is going to be half mv squared, but um, different velocity equals half m times eight squared because we, we were told in the beginning of the question that at the bottom your tangential velocity is eight meters per second. Okay, so the sum of that equals the sum of that. So my energy equation, I hope you're miles ahead. Have, have you put me on like 1.5 or two times <laughs> speed? Am I going too slow for you? I'm really sorry if I am, but um, I hope I'm not going too fast either. All right, so at the point we care about, we've got 1.5 mg cosine phi plus one half m. The velocity we care about squared equals minus 1.5 mg plus half of 64 is 32 plus, plus 32 m. And hey, the m's are going to drop out way <laughs> useful. All right. Whack, whack, whack. whack. I've got phi, I've got V. Let's tidy this up. 1.5 G cosine phi plus a half V squared equals minus 1.5 G plus 32. That's just a number. Okay. I've got simultaneous equations. And the first thing they ask for is where the damn thing is. So let's go after phi. Because if we go after phi, we can get theta, and then I know where we are. Okay, this is our relationship. Grr, cosine phi. Grr, cosine phi equals v squared. V squared? Yeah. Grr, cosine phi is v squared. Okay. Simultaneous equations. Well, we can swap out v squared wholesale. So 1.5 G, and that, that's just looking at it and going, ah, that's nice. <laughs> 1 1.5 G cosine phi plus a half GR cosine phi equals number. Okay, that wouldn't it be nice if a G divided up? All right, so, you know, tidy up your bits. I'm going to factorize out a cosine phi add those numbers together and then divide by them. I'm gonna do that all in one fell swoop if you need to write it out by all means. And you should check my work. But I think that's my deal. And you know what? I know that R is 1.5. I didn't have to keep growling. So I actually have a number to put in here. 
and this whole thing is just some godforsaken number. Okay, if you slap it through your calculator, which I did do earlier, and I have now lost myself, um, you're going to get I think it's going to come out as cosine. You should check this. Cosine phi is three four six over four four one. Completely guessable fraction. No, it's not. Three four six over four four one. Um, inverse cosine, and you're going to get phi coming out as thirty eight point three degrees, or zero point six six nine radians, if you must. I, I don't I don't measure in angles and radians. I do math in radians, but I don't think in radians. So you're about 38 degree, uh, 38 .3 degrees, but that was phi. So theta is 180, subtract that. So your theta shakes out as 141.7, oh, one decimal place, one p, one dp. Because I'm not sure I care beyond one decimal. Whoops. I'm not sure I care about on beyond one decimal place, one damn decimal place. Or three significant figures, which is why I did that for ratings. Whatever. I guess that's four significant figures. I don't care. This is not an error measurement class. Do something reasonable and, and consider it again. Okay. So you're about 141.7 degrees up from the vertical is where your tension is going to be zero in the rod. OK, force equation, energy equation, simultaneous equations. The substitution sh shook out nicely. I can do algebra. I can deal with my calculator. I know how to do inverse trig. OK, and how fast are we going? Go back and solve for velocity. Go back and solve for velocity. If you do that, I trust that you can do one point, excuse me, you can do 9.8 times 1.5 times the cosine of 38.3 degrees. And then square root that sucker, and you're going to end up with velocity at 3.4 meters per second. Okay, I trust you to do that work. That's where you should come out. And I guess we really are one decimal place because that sure as heck isn't three significant figures. Okay.